Hi, for this video what I have is two um, examples where we're gonna go through and we're gonna state the amplitude, period, phase shift, vertical shift, range, and reflections, if any. This is an important concept to be able to master, especially if you are taking a class where you have an online homework platform and it asks you for these things specifically in order to graph your sine or cosine um, waves. So um, we're gonna talk about all of these in the video and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the amplitude and I'm just gonna do A entirely through and then we will go and do the same thing for B. So the first thing, the amplitude, and I'm just going to abbreviate it, okay? The amplitude, remember, is always whatever number is in front of sign, the absolute value of that term. So we would take the absolute value of three, and we see that our amplitude is three. That means that the height of our wave is going to be three points above or below wherever the midpoint of our wave is. All right, moving into the next one. The next thing that we're going to find is the period. And remember that period is always two pi. And the reason we use two pi is because when our term in front is one, it takes two pi to complete a circle. And so that's how long it takes for our wave to repeat. So we're gonna take two pi and we're going to divide it by our B term. So our B term is the number in front of X. Make sure with this, well, and it's not for this one, it's fine, we can just take our number in front of our x. So I would have two pi over two, which ends up giving us pi. So our period for this one is pi. All right, phase shift. Phase shift is the right or left movement. And what we have to do is we have to look at this part right here and make sure that inside is in factored form. So before I do the phase shift, I am going to factor this if it's not already done so. If you look at the second one, it's already been factored for us. So we wouldn't have to worry about this step. But in this one, it's not factored. So what I need to do is inside of my sign is I have to take the two out of both of these terms by undistributing it. So if I undistribute the two from two, I'm just left with x. And on this one, I would have to divide by pi, I mean, sorry, divide pi by two and so this part right here would give us our phase shift. Remember that we always go in the opposite direction because we're trying to figure out what would make it to where this inside is equal to zero. So x minus pi over two, um, if I solved that, we would end up with pi over two. The other thing that we could have done to find the phase shift is we could take this part 2x minus, the, the original one, 2x minus pi, and set it equal to zero. Okay, um, and then if I solve that, I end up with positive pi over two. So that would give us the same thing, but if you just know the transformations, that's all you have to do is just the opposite. So if I would have solved that for zero because it's whatever inside is equal to zero, um, that's where your phase shift is going to go. So I'm gonna do pi over two. All right, next one is the vertical shift. Oh, I put my eraser on vertical shift. The vertical shift is up or down movement. This is, is anything added or subtracted on the outside? And for this one, the four is being added to this. So the vertical shift for this one would be up four. And I didn't put um, right or left on this. You could put right pi over two, but it's just going to be positive pi over two on the phase shift. All right, our range. For this one, you kind of have to think about what's happening. Let me grab a different color because I already used yellow. Let me grab white. All right, so our range. If we think about this and what's happening, sometimes it helps us to give a visual of what's going on for the range. Okay, with our range, normally we start here and we go up to one and we go to negative one in our parent function. Okay, but remember that we're doing some things to this. The first thing that we're doing is we're shifting it up four, which means that that's where our midpoint is going to occur is at four. 
okay? Now remember that instead of going up or down one, we are multiplying everything in sign by three. So my amplitude is three, which tells me from that center point, I have to shift up three. And because this is sine, I would have been here, and then I would be here, then I would come back down, and then I would have to go three below. So I would have to go one, two, three below. And so that would help me find my range. So my range is from positive one to seven. So my range is from one to seven inclusive. Okay, and as far as reflections go, reflections either A or B has to be negative. So since my um, A term, my amplitude is positive, there is no reflection over the x-axis. Um, if there was, um, sorry, if my B term is negative, then we would reflect over the y-axis. Okay, so for this one, there is no reflection. All right, so let's go into the second one. I'll go through a little bit quicker on this one, hopefully. Um, the amplitude, again, is the absolute value of the number in front of cosine. So in this case, it's understood to be negative one. So this right here would help us find our amplitude. So that would give us positive one. So that just means that we're gonna go one above or below wherever our midpoint is. All right. The next one is going to be our period. So remember with our period, we are looking at two pi over the term in front of x. So I'm taking this one right here and I'm going to divide by one half, which ends up giving me four pi, which means that because this number is smaller, we have what is known as a horizontal, um, a horizontal pull. It's my brain just thought, forgot what that's called. Um, but we're basically pulling it apart horizontally. It's going to go at a much slower, a horizontal stretch. There we go, that's the word. Um, this one is a horizontal compression because it goes through quicker. So it's like pushing it together like an accordion. And then on this one, it's pulling it apart. So it's a stretch, okay? Um, the next one that we're gonna talk about is the phase shift. And remember I said that the inside part has to be in factored form. So it's already been factored. The one half has been taken out. So we would look at this part right here and do the opposite, okay? So for this one, it's going to end up being negative pi over two, or you could say that it's going to the left pi over two. However, it makes the most sense to you. If you're entering this into an online platform, then you would just put the negative pi over two. All right. The next thing that we're going to look at is the vertical shift. And our vertical shift is whether it's going up or down. Okay. Um, so for this one, it would be on the outside, what's being added or subtracted on the outside. So since this is negative two, um, we would say that this is going to go down two. Okay. Our range, again, we have to look at what's happening to our Y coordinates. And so our Y coordinates on this one are impacted by both our amplitude and our vertical shift, okay? So for this one, we know that our entire graph is shifted from here and we're going to take and we're gonna shift it down two. So our center point would be at negative two. Okay, um, normally with cosine, we start one above that, but because we're reflecting, we would actually be down here, okay? But it's not going to matter because our curve is only going to go one above or it's going to go one below. So for this one, it's gonna go below and then above and it's just been flipped upside down, okay? And I didn't talk, I just, gave you the answer to the next one, but our range is going to be from negative three up to negative one. And then our last one is, I already talked about this, this is going to be reflected. 
and it's reflected over the x axis because it's negative on the last one. So it really would have been reflected over this one first and then shifted down two. Um, but because I drew the picture here first, you can do it either way. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.